How you doing? Andy, Good, how are you? Andy Buck. We've met. <laughs> yes, we did. Dad came. I was talking to you about Back of the car? Mattress back. Correct. Would you say back of the what? Back of the car? No, never there. Thank you, Andy Buck. Roger Hart, how are you? Bye, thank you. Good, how are you, Andy? Um, how are you? Good. You Charlie? Good to be better. I'm great. That's good to hear, Bob. How are you? Doing just fine. We don't leave you out of the loop, Steve. <laughs> we don't want to leave you out of the loop. <laughs> it's okay. I'm left out of the loop a lot of times. Yeah. 100 years and you can't get off the cross pens yet, huh? <laughs> but, but isn't that true? Hundred years, every but every kind of got to have a cross pen in that. It seems to be the thing that our families buy us. Yeah, <coughs> that's right. Yeah. Do they still make? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I can <coughs> gave up for a year, year years, giving them refills, <coughs> but I keep them refilled because it's nice to have a pen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. NASA actually bought a whole bunch of those in passing out the people in the uh, Apollo program that was an Apollo mm -hmm. mission model. Yeah, it's probably nice to have one. I appreciate it. Okay, so uh, let us begin. Good, good. Do uh, you want to start? Or? Yeah, sure, certainly. So, first, yeah. thank you for having us here tonight. Um, as you yeah, have copies of all of our yeah. proposed. Yeah. Fiscal year yeah. budget for next year, oh, yeah. representing just under a 1% of 1099. I know there's um, questions that you probably have. You've got difficult decisions to make throughout the budget process, and we're here to answer your questions and help you with whatever you need help with. Sounds good. And good evening, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> good evening After. to you. <clears throat> and I had a question that came up out of the CIP, um, cost of, of vehicles. Can you explain what you do with the vehicles and how many you have and uh, what you're replacing and what you how you dispose of the ones you're replacing? Um, I didn't know we would be talking about CIP, well, so I don't have any data before me on CIP. There are no cruisers in this particular area of the budget, but I can answer you generically. Well, that's good enough for right now. Yeah. So that's one of the things when we were here before, we had asked about how many cars do you have in the department, and said you could go back to <clears throat> we'll, we'll give you some numbers here tonight. That's not a problem, but it, if it's specific, yeah, we're not prepared to talk about that. Tonight. I'm a newcomer to the <coughs> understanding the budgeting process, yep. and uh, <coughs> uh, Kathy Simonelli, uh, Simonelli came through with a sheet that had the CIP's recommendations. However, we didn't give her fair warning that we were going to ask questions about the thing, so she just presented it, and when she wasn't prepared, I just went stop asking questions. And, and we do provide that to them, and we do pr present to the CIP. I, I'd like to know so, what that is. It, yeah. You know, we can talk about it in generality yeah. today, but I would like to have you just kind of tell me, you know, in a short note paragraph or have one pager, you know, how many vehicles you have, what your replacement policy is, yep. uh, do you go out for bid, uh, you, you got, you've got two and a half vehicles, are you allowed to swing that half of, half a cost around the corner for the next year? We didn't request that, that was a, a ball loss. We put in for two, I believe. Um, why don't you spend a minute? Yeah, so uh, <coughs> if you have your CLP back, it's we submitted. Um, All I have is this one sheet that she, she gave me. Okay, we did submit a list of all of our marked vehicles with the mileage, the VIN numbers, everything. Uh, we have two categories of vehicles primarily. We have marked vehicles, which we have uh, 10 marked vehicles, 11 if you count the um, F-350 that is, uh, we got off a of grant to tow our command center, that big trailer. Um, we have about seven unmarked vehicles, so that's our, our total fleet. If you want to count eight, to count the ACO vehicle as part of that. Um, Once again, you might believe how, how many marked vehicles? We have um, 
10 marked vehicles that are operating. And are those, are and those then, all um, sports utility vehicle type vehicles? No, they're either Crown Vicks, sedans, which are the Interceptor sedans, or the Interceptor SUV. What I see mostly are the SUVs around town. We have three SUVs. And the rest are cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and you, aside from the mark, you got 10 of those, you got how many other kind of cars? Unmarked vehicles. We have, uh, like, the Chief and I both have an unmarked vehicle that's coming in, and there's seven of those total. Seven? Yes. So you have a total of 17 vehicles. And then if you count the ACO vehicle, there's 18. What's an ACO vehicle? Animal, Animal control. Oh, okay. That's a, that counts uh, the truck, too. White Toyota. That's counting the uh, truck. The SUV. Three, yeah. yeah. Off the top of my head, I mean, I don't have all of it right in front of me. Mm -hmm. I, I, I reviewed it. You know, I'm, I could be one off. Of the mark, there is a two tier system. One is our primary vehicles for patrol, and then there's a backline vehicle that we use for private duty. We charge the company $10 an hour. So it pays for gas. If I were building something on near the road, you, in the you had somebody, exactly. you place somebody at the site, exactly. uh, you, you charge ten dollars an hour Correct. for the vehicle. For the vehicle, and then the uh, the private sector pays for the uh, uh, the, way, the wages of the, uh, the officer. Exactly. So I misspoke. I was corrected by the deputy. We now charge fifteen dollars an hour for the vehicle. Then you're absolutely right. We charge for the officer, but the charge. The town also does an excess charge for doing the processing and the paperwork and things of that. It's fifteen dollars an hour just for the car. Per hour. Per hour. Okay. The other question that we had when we were performing regarding the vehicles is, you know, how how many vehicles are actually used on a shift? I can speak to that. I can give you. A you can come back to us. No, I can give you a, a, a general answer to the question. And I also ask, answer the part about replacing the vehicles, too, which you ask at the original onset of this series. Um, first of all, we can have, on a side to any given shift, about six officers. That's our maximum on any given in shift. In individual cars? In, in individual cars. Which now, is mind, our front line. That so very rarely happens. So for those are primary front line vehicles are the ones that we keep try to keep in the best shape. Generally with a couple extra cars, like two extra in case somebody gets held over at a shift. Uh, say you have a, a motor vehicle accident and they get held over at Which, that accident. Like now has happened in the last few weeks as we're down four cars because of different stuff. Yeah, so so we, we keep that. And those two backline vehicles, so that rounds out our fleet of 10. What's, this, this, what's the distinction between a first line vehicle and a that point of Mileage and Mileage. service. We actually have had um, some vehicles that are relatively low miles as far as our fleet goes, but when their service history is so great that it, it doesn't make sense to have that as a frontline vehicle because every now and again we get a lemon. Yeah, you're talking services and maintenance. Maintenance, but yeah, maintenance. How much it costs to keep it up and running. And, and truth be told, the Crown Vicks, we do have one Crown Vic on the front line right now being operated by the, the school resource officer on a daily basis, or on Monday through Friday. Uh, so that doesn't get a lot of miles. She's had it for three and a half years, and the, the mileage is under 80,000. So we keep her service in rate is low. And the service rate is low. What's the magic um, for when you replace? Is You obviously keep track of your service record we on a car, how many dollars per mile or whatever you you do uh, on each individual car. Uh, is it age of the car? Is it the service record of the car? Is it the mileage of the car? All of yes. the above. Yes, and the condition of the car. I could roll a car into this parking lot right now. Uh, we just stripped it down. It has between 70 and 80,000 miles, and the thing looks like it's been through a war. It's just the seat. You sit in the seat, you touch your bottom on the floor pan. Um, the car has just been used. And a lot of times that's because the mileage doesn't show the hours necessarily on the vehicle. The newer Crown Vicks later in, I believe around 2009, they put an hour clock so yeah. we can actually tell the hours on the vehicle. So when you're sitting and running radar, it's still clocking hours and having an impact. 
that time. Okay. So yep. several years ago, we did an analysis on our fleet at the time, and I believe uh, some of the selectmen were on the board at the time, and we discussed it. We had some cars that if you apply the mileage, our formula, we had cars that were probably in excess of 400,000 miles because of when the When you consider the, uh, the island, right. the yeah, island city. Hours. Yes. As far as the condition of that car, we have to factor in the, the case that it's running 24 hours a day, and one cop turns it over to another cop who turns it over to another cop as it cycles through its 24 hours. Different and why does it do? Why does it do that? And what's special about that automobile that you? Uh, it's not that it's special. It's what's available. Cars could be getting maintenance. Vehicles could have been in a wreck. Whatever it is, um, we assign a vehicle to a police officer to get greater consistency and pride in, in using the vehicle. So they have an automobile uh, that is assigned to them. And we're, yeah. and we're in control of that as to who gets assigned what so we can keep track <clears throat> and things of that nature. But the point being is these are service vehicles that have frequent stops, starts, um, responses to emergencies. It's different than a routine residential use type car where mm -hmm. body factors just our gun belts alone, the way the guns stick out the back, it's constantly digging into to the seat. I was just talking to the chairman recently and noticing the pilling on my uniform. I believe you can see Rogers. Just when you walk, like your normal shirt might last you X amount of years, but just when you're moving and bumping into the gear that we require, it's harsh on the equipment comparatively. So um, we take all of that into consideration. We try to get as long as we can out of vehicles. Uh, we have them on the liner. I mean, three, five, seven years, we've had vehicle. I think that 350's been around for... The F-350 is a 2003. Three, yeah. The uh, oldest uh, Crown Vic that we currently have is an unmarked Crown Vic that's an 2009. Keep in so, mind that the, uh, the vehicles that are assigned to an officer are assigned to that officer for that shift. And then the next shift comes in, obviously, and then that, that vehicle is going to the <coughs> officers. So, so the vehicle so even though they're still be using that same yeah. car every exactly. time they come in, it's still being used. And we have no parking structure or protection, so <coughs> we're seeing the elements. At one point, when our parking lot wasn't paved, there was a lot of grass, and we were finding out our brake lines were having issues and things of that nature. That's since now decreased since we got the parking lot, so we, we factor that. This is the key. We try to be as frugal as we can extend service as long as humanly possible without ever impacting operational effectiveness or public safety. So when you hear 10 vehicles with backline, frontline, six or seven frontline vehicles, okay, we might not have that on shift, but things happen. Vehicles need to be shifted, maintained. There could be an airplane crash, there could be a telephone pole down, and all of a sudden you're blocking two ends. So it's that operational readiness. So cars, will, I think we had two in the parking lot tonight sitting there that weren't being used. So it's operational readiness, but being at a number that's affordable. And we've gotten to the point now where we squeeze every dime we can out of our maintenance budget and maintain the vehicles. But in answering your question for rotating them out, um, we take and extend as long as we can. And then when it's time to make that, that swap out, we pick the, the vehicles that are the most expensive, that are in the worst condition, that have higher, higher mileage, you know, all that stuff. We factor it all in. He looks at every single car, we clock it, we go to the commission, and we make a final decision. And this 88K, that's for two vehicles? Correct. Uh, and do you go out for bid on those things, or do you have one company that you go to? No, we, we don't care what company it is. It's the state bid that does it for us. Oh, okay. So there's everybody bids and goes through the process. So it goes through and a, then the lowest. A large acquisition. Exactly. So we're bid. getting the same state price bid. that Weathersfield and Hartford and something okay. and all that. Now, when you do that, do you strip the car of all of its uh, electronics, like, you know, the yeah, we're also coming towards the end. He just mentioned we only have one Crown Vic. Ford stopped making that original Crown Vic. None of that gear fit in these new interceptors. So now these SUVs and cruisers, they're on the same chassis, tire-wise, light bars, cages, all that safety equipment. Nothing from a Crown Vic would transfer, not nothing, but mostly it wouldn't. So a lot of the money that, not a lot, but some of that, what you're seeing, 
is for the gear as well. So those light bars. Are these two new Exactly. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say that's. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> that CIP request was broken down. And it was completely broken down as to what dollar we were right. It showed that one, I believe, one of the cars was a fully equipped car and to replace the Crown Vic, and one wasn't. One is a swap. So now we're to the point where this year mm -hmm. we were able to take one uh, inter interceptor sedan and a second interceptor sedan, brand new, and swap all the gear out from one to the other. So we had a little savings. Mm -hmm. so, so in that bid, it spelled out like $750 for the decals and the placing of the decals on there. It's to that level of, of scrutiny. And you can give us a copy of that? It's we we it submitted it to the town. Yeah. Could you get us a copy? Yeah, I don't see Appreciate how, it. How would you like to deliver it to you? I mean, through. You can I mean, if you can email it, that's fine. Yeah. You can email it. Can we get a list of all the vehicles? That that's in there. there. It's in there. Yeah. Okay. It doesn't have uh, the repairs for each vehicle over the past three years. We keep track, track of that. Yeah, yeah. Could you include yeah. that? That's that? not in the CIP. We discussed that verbally. Yeah. But oh, could you provide yeah. that to us? Yeah. One of the things that we do keep in mind, like over the years, we I don't know if you noticed back in the day that there were black and white cruisers here. Um, we stopped doing that because it was expensive to get them that way, so we, we now get them white. So we try to lower the cost. It also allows us, if there's a car that's still serviceable, I believe there's one sitting in the back of town hall right now, we can transfer them to other town use as well. That's so, what I was going to ask. Uh, when you're disposing of a car out of your fleet, which has high demands placed on it, is there anybody else in town that is, is given an opportunity to pick it up? Yeah, sometimes they can. So we turn them over to the commission. The commission says, okay, we're done with them. And then they get turned over to the town, um, the first selectman's office, and then they're put at Public Works, and then they know where they go. And right? if they are disposed of, how do you how do, we do that? Is we that have, not something we have no involvement in that. I believe Lenny does that over. through auction. Say it. I believe Lenny does that through okay. auction. I've seen <clears throat> town cars in service for parks and rec, uh, town hall, uh, public works, I believe, use one for a little while. Well, there's only one here, and I think the need is for more than one. All the things that we've been hearing. Well, I, I have to say that... Um, Didn't you just get a car for the building department? We got, no, we bought a brand new car for the building department. <clears throat> and um, Lori Witten would like a four-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, she's not happy with the Crown Vic, mm -hmm. but um, she uses it. And uh, I will also say that the cars we get are used. <laughs> no question <laughs> about it. <laughs> but you're driving them differently than us. Yeah. It's a no. lot less level yeah. of a service failure to maintain things of that nature and the conditions that we drive in. They have to be held to a higher standard oh, than yeah. driving I agree you know, with the mail across town. And so. it really does go to Lenny, and Lenny makes the determination of, mm -hmm. of the condition of the car and where it would go. Yeah. Um, so. One mm -hmm. of the vehicles coming out of service right now, we just had it. The equipment pulled out of it is a forward all wheel drive oh, oh, sedan. Oh, and you should have that there as soon as it might be. It is one of the newest ones, or the, the first ones that were made, so I want to say 12, 2012. Oh, really? Yeah. Decent vehicle. It's uh, 90,000 probably on it. Uh, it could be serviced. Used by a less demanding yeah. yep. requirement. Good thing is, we don't use the back seats. We take, we actually put uh, You're going to get a brand new back seat. Yeah, so the back seat's going to be brand keep that brand new. <laughs> um, So with a little spit and shine, I'm sure it can be done up to service. And Linda's already made it, is that correct? No. 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 What could he do? No. No. He doesn't have the capacity. Or the equipment. Or the manpower. Yeah. Okay. So what's in your budget? Just to, before we finish with that, just a personal observation. You mentioned the lights and putting the lights on there and all that stuff. Yeah, this is a personal observation, and I don't know if anybody said anything before about this, but the the lights the, on the top and wherever else, when you're coming up on one of your cars from the back, that you're completely blinded because those lights are so extremely bright that in other towns I, I don't have that. Hartford certainly doesn't have that. I don't know if it's unique to these or, or what it is, but they're, they're just blinding. And if there's a, an officer that would be standing there, 
kind of puts them at risk, you know, because you don't, you, can't, you absolutely can't see it's that so severe. Well, stroke. thank you for the feedback. Uh, I, yeah. I do know we use the same vendor and the same equipment as yeah. industry standard as everybody around here. We are not reinventing the wheel. Yeah. We are using <clears throat> what is defensible legally to keep the public safe, to keep officers safe. We definitely take feedback and try to make adjustments. I know the state believes they're, those are the same way. They're, they're you try to pass one on 91. And, yeah. You can't see anything for the moment. Yeah, they're all the just same. The first technology would be uh, new LED and and um, yep. I forget the other something. Well, yeah. Why don't you talk about the new technology coming out right now? At least when the vehicle's moving. Well, I can. We can make suggestions to our. There is what's called a high low button on them. So when you stop somebody initially, the the lights are very bright. Then when you're conducting your stop. At night, you can hit the high-low button and it'll dim them down, yeah. so they're not as bright. So we can ensure that our people are making sure they're using the high-low button. Hit. The other is the further is um, there's new technology that we're going to try out on one of the vehicles that's currently in the shop right now. It's more in line with the state police of using up on the highway. It's um, the newest technology for Wayland light bars that when you're in a pursuit mode. Say you're going to a call and you touch the brake, it will automatically dim the back of the lights so the people behind you can see that your brake lights. Okay. They'll see that you're stopping. When you get out of the car, some of the newer lights that we have, they actually dim, as soon as you open the door, it'll dim half the light so it's not obstructing the officer's eye. Yeah. So that technology That's is out good. there, we're going to try it, and but we can remind our officers to use that. Okay. Yep. Moving on. Are we on the budget? Yeah. Where would you like to start? Wherever you'd like, sir. Right from the beginning. Uh, probably the easiest way to go through this is we present this document, it starts with this. Yeah. That is probably the easiest way to go through this budget line by line, because it has a little explanation of everything, and historically it's just made everything a lot easier, and that's why we stick with it. That's a 2.25% increase? Correct. How come not two? That's what the contract says. Oh, okay. That's a fair enough answer. <laughs> I don't have a contract. <laughs> My department gets two at best. Mm -hmm. um, I have a question. Uh, uh, that includes you two guys. Uh, uh, how do your salaries compare to towns around us? We do a comparison to um, like towns as well as all towns in Hartford County, which is 28 or 29, and we sit one or two below the middle, so just below the halfway mark. If you compare yourself to, for example, Enfield or, or Ellington or Suffield or Winter, That's all the towns included in Hartford how, County. How would you shake out compared to the, the real local ones like Windsor Locks and yeah. Suffield and India. One or two below the middle. Even there? There's definitely some that are lower than us, Suffield being one of them. Windsor Locks is higher, Vernon's higher, things of that nature. Um, Enfield yeah. and South Windsor, are they higher or lower, do you recall? Higher. They're both higher? Yeah. <clears throat> Enfield, three or four thousand dollars higher, maybe a little more. That's is that the new guy? Or? That's a new chief, isn't it? He hasn't started. Yeah, he hasn't started yet. No, but his salary is higher. Higher as well. But the old chief wasn't that much, right? I believe they're going to be right about the same pay. And from a, from a management standpoint, uh, do they have 
more or fewer officers in, in nine. You know, I'm sure Ellington is different than infield. And, right. So it's all reflective of workload. Um, larger agencies has more command staff to divvy work, more captains, more lieutenants, things of that nature. So it's all reflective. We have 26 officers here in town. That's everything included. Yes. Yes. And everything. Yes. yes. But only one lieutenant for, for other command style work, grant management, patrol management, field training, training, all that stuff. We're involved in all of it, budgeting, so, everything. So he is not a, uh, uh, an officer that uh, goes to accidents and fire. Is he, he still does in, it all. In addition to, in addition to duty. Him. Yeah, and that's one of the problems is he's still attached to shift minimum and to the workload of what's happening out in the town so he gets pulled away from administrative work mm -hmm. on a fairly regular basis. Mm -hmm. But he writes your grants? No, we do. You, you too, you do? Yeah. Actually, there's others that share in it Ooh. as well. Yeah. Some of the motor vehicle stuff. So there's 24 sworn officers then, plus you two? We're sworn to, so the total is 26, but that does include him and I. Okay, so they said 24 sworn plus the two of you are sworn. Right. Yeah. Okay. And in the dispatcher area, it's another one here. How many dispatchers do you have? Six. Six full time. Correct. And what's what's on the what do they do? What's that? What do they do? Yeah. There are telecommunicators in first contact with the public. They have a they 911. They do 911. They do emergency. They do uh, non emergency routine. They handle the front window, um, enter warrants, uh, enter stolen uh, property, uh, run all kinds of database checks. They're the lifeline for the police officer in the street, and they're the primary and first contact to the public when they mm -hmm. need police assistance. One thing that I had question in my mind about uh, this latest shooting and the damn craziness that goes on. Do you people have a plan for protecting our schools? Yes, we should, we should not talk about the details yeah, of that in public actually, session. Actually, we were going to schedule a time. I don't know Bob the time you brought that. I had asked to have a meeting with you to talk about what plan is. I don't want to talk about that in open. I'm not sure I even have to know. But I just would, you know, do you have a plan? Is my question. I can answer your question without um, ruining any confidentiality issues. Um, we do have a plan. We're very well integrated with our school. Security and protection is paramount on our mind. Um, we actually just had a very lengthy conversation about this at our last police commission and then on a fairly regular basis we discuss it. But we do it under security and executive session because we don't like to yep. discuss our well, full you know, point and information you and equipment in here and things of that nature. But it is of paramount importance to us to protect our children and protect populations we'll that need to with the time so we can get that out there. Okay. Under clerical, how many people are there? There is one administrative assistant and two in records. Is this not on the cover sheet? It says civilian. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right there. <coughs> it just yes. has a break in time. Yeah, yes. Okay. And two of records. So if you look at page two where it says sworn officers 26, like we've discussed, that includes the chief and the deputy chief. The administrative nine, that's the six dispatchers, two records division workers, and one administrative assistant that culminates the nine and then the two part-time employees are the animal control part-time employees over the course of the deputy chief and i being together we vacated the full-time position there going into two part-timers busy or yeah there's enough work uh, to yeah with animals and calls and things of that nature um, the two part-timers share how many hours for an entire week? 20 -ish? It's uh, Don't hold me to it. <coughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not a huge amount of numbers. So we have combined. Them, you know, combined. Combined. Now, do they have to respond 
Um, no, we'll handle some stuff when we can. There's certain things um, that they handle, but we work it all out through scheduling. They're not on 24 hour call or anything. Okay. 29, sorry. So 29. There we go. Thank you. Over time. What, um, what brings them up to a session and why is it not? That actually is not here on this note. That's that about half of what it used to be right. when we first took it. That's to her. It's about. Okay. Well, we'll answer that, why that they over. depends on who's paying for it, whether it's enormous or not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we understand that. It's Donald Trump paying. It's nothing to him. It's not even a bar tab. But to the time he's went through it, it's material. Well, if we can respond to your, your question, what he's saying is that's about half of what it was when we took over the agency. Um, it's literally 50% lower. We can now explain to you what it entails. Yeah, we do it and have done analysis on overtime expenditures. But we find that it, over the past five years, it, it varies between 11 and 13% of the overall budget which uh, compared to other agencies is not, and that was right with what I was getting at, is not an enormous number. Um, with this, there are contractual ob obligations built into the collective bargaining agreement that we are required to pay over time. If somebody works in excess of eight hours in a day, we have to pay them over time. If they work in excess of 40 hours or whatever their work standard is, because sometimes it's 32, sometimes it's 40, based on the schedule. If they go in excess of that, that's <coughs> overtime. That has to be put in here. If somebody takes a sick day, and we have four people scheduled to work that day, two people take a sick day, I have to fill that person because we have a minimum built into the collective bargaining agreement. So we have to fill that, and that costs overtime. So we do everything in our power and have been working as a team for 11 years to minimize that number and we've been able to reduce it considerably and we are where we are today because of those reasons right there that we have written down in the document. What drives you, what drives you over, over time? Is it, uh, uh, let's say the shift starts at 3, the officers work until 11 at 10.45 or 10.33. Uh, uh, serious motor vehicle accident, rollover comes, then they're stuck with the report and medical attention and things of that nature. And criminal so investigations. It's unforeseen things. It it's exactly. Require, it's exactly. People exactly stay over, but on a normal basis, uh, uh, they would go home on time. Exactly. So unequivocally, we can state here that we understand our protective role of the taxpayer's dollar. We take it so seriously that we watch it every day Every month we submit reports and we report what officer stayed and why, what person booked off sick and what it created or didn't create in overtime. So we're constantly watching it and we've reduced that by nearly 50% in the 10 or 11 years that we've been doing this together because we do value the taxpayer's dollar, period, the end. I get it, but there's a cost to doing this business and providing public safety when unforeseen circumstances and all of this has happened this year, but when an airplane crashes in our town, it requires officers to attend to injured traffic, preventing future um, things. When there's a home invasion and a teenage boy is in his closet and waiting for help, um, officers are stuck picking up guns off the side of the street that the bad guys threw out the window. It takes time and effort to, to get these cases done right, and we only have one chance to get it right. Um, so it's important to us, so we monitor it, we keep it at its absolute minimum, but we meet our public safety needs, we meet our contract obligations, and we do so effective and efficiently. With an average rate, Chief, what does uh, uh, 286K, how many hours is that? You're going deep math on me now. I, 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 <laughs> You, you, you multiply that by 0.7? No, you divide it by one of the other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 salary, salary, double time, or time and a half. Either of those answers could be useful. We, we answer to the commission. <clears throat> we give them a detailed report. They know to the penny what 
any officer makes on a, on a weekly, bi-weekly basis. They know whether the person is on an extended tour, which is what the chief was talking about. That's what we call they it. Need to, they know whether it's on an investigative thing, where an off, uh, detective may have been called in when he's home with his kids <clears> on <throat> Sunday. When something happens, he has to come in and do the investigation. Do you have detectives? Yes, we do. You do? Yes. And how, how many of those? Two. Two. And they do not, Carl and Roberts, right? Mm -hmm. They do not uh, go out on routine. Correct. They, they, they do not go out on routine. Uh, police work. Mm -hmm. They do yes. investigative follow-up work. Mm -hmm. So we give these detailed reports, and um, the commission can attest to it. There is very little <laughs> gray area in what we do. Mm -hmm. They see it every single month, and I'm sure they would be happy to share <coughs> those documents with you if you, you want to show up to the meeting and see them. Oh, They're just, there. Just They're wondering, uh, Michael, uh, if. Uh, if you if you had some round round number for uh, an average rate that I could divide this by, I think for the number of, I don't really know that of overtime hours. It's a big disparity of what they're paid. So there is, yeah. You know. Well, there's step increases, service rates. There's also times of the year that are busier than others, so it's it's cyclical. Um, there's been times I've called them in the middle of the week and. You know the case load is, is extremely high, and um, or we, and one of the things that hurts us on the overtime side is is injuries. When when officers get hurt on duty, we've gone as high as four and five officers out on extended leave for heart conditions and back surgery and things of that nature, and then it, it, it gets yeah, really some yes, some no. Yeah. With the uh, in here, it's 114,000 for obligated contractual holiday pay. What? That's not in that number. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it, it is. is. Mm -hmm. So, what could you yeah, talk about you. that? Is what does that mean? Contractual holiday. Either pay? if somebody works a holiday, okay. a 13 holidays plus okay. the two floating holidays. If they work a holiday, they get a specific holiday rate. Okay. Or which is all contractually obligated. Which yeah. is all. Yeah. yeah. So or if they work yeah. overtime on the holiday. Say, for example, they weren't scheduled to work and they get called in for a fill, then they get a rate. Yeah, unless you haven't hired, but obviously you need people there on Christmas yeah. and you know, yeah. so you have to pay, a little, yeah, pay, pay that out over time. Yeah, do you have a cop uh, time arrangement with your people? Or we do. Or, or, yes. So if they work uh, some hours, would rather you know do something else on a Saturday or, or a Monday or something like that? You work. Yes, um, we had to, and we worked at <laughs> dealing with that because that can run away from you too. Because comp hours, you still have to pay at the end of the year if the person doesn't take them. So we were able through contract negotiations and over the past. Is it or lose it? <coughs> no, absolutely not. That's pay. We've been able to wrestle a lot of things. We've had very good success during negotiations and reducing some things. If we had our way, there, there wouldn't be kind of time, but there so is. So what yeah. we've done is we have a cap, and then we have a time frame that they have to take it. So, um, for example, they can cap to a certain point, but as December uh, 31st rolls around, they have to commit to that time. <coughs> so in June, we don't all of a sudden get a big bill that we have to pay when we don't know where we're at with our overtime. Mm -hmm. So, they, you know, it's a double-edged sword, it really is. Have you thought about um, where you have an overtime need, <clears throat> and it happens probably weekly, right, to get to those numbers at some point to, to, uh, to hire former officers that have retired from the department, officers that have retired from other departments that are fully trained and have gone through the academy, still certified, et cetera, et cetera. Thought about that to reduce the cost. I mean, part-time people. Mm -hmm. they, they are, they'll no benefit. You know, and they're. And I'm sure they're. There are, I don't know see many issues that, that are all post-certified that are not working. What? what? Collective bargaining. Collective bargaining agreement. Well, wait, 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 wait. Have you thought about it? Well, obviously <coughs> we we think of of everything we can, but what you just said describes a perfect world of some ready pool of recently retired candidates that would rush into the town of East Windsor to be part-time police officers. I can tell you now that 
that those officers that do retire in that fashion. Um, we've hired lateral transfers. We hired a gentleman who served 28 years in Glastonbury, exactly like you're talking about, to save time in the academy as a full-time officer. The same as both of you, right? Exactly. So that's what I'm talking about. Right, and, and taking that, extrapolating that out to the part-time, they, they're not there. First of all, separation of three years, you lose your certification because you have to keep going to mm -hmm. your in-service. So that pool for part-time police officers, it just isn't there. We're in a, a society now where we're struggling for candidates at the full-time position. Not East Windsor, not Hartford County, the United States. We're all struggling for a quality police officer um, that would be acceptable to us in today's day and age under our strict hiring practices. Um, it's a bad job. You people are guilty until proven innocent. It's also um, some of the problems that are created in law enforcement are poor hiring practices and accepting people that don't meet our standards. Right, but when you have someone that's retired from a place that they have a record of, you know, and a lot of times they do good or bad, yep. you know, that you have at least that under the belt. So you wouldn't try to do that then. Uh, presently, we are there. Yeah, they're not yeah. there. <coughs> but you haven't tried to find anybody well, to do that. We have a collective bargaining agreement that really doesn't address part-time police officers. Or dispatchers. So, and, right. Or dispatchers, so we would have to negotiate that first right. before right. we would even be able to broach the subject. But Glastonbury did this. A lot of places, uh, East Windsor used to do it too. I, I know that. That's like years ago. I'm talking about currently, Glastonbury has done that. To reduce their cost. Well, I can tell you now that that candidate pool is not there. I don't know how you know if you don't look. Well, I'm not trying to get in your your way here. What I, you do? I understand. But I'm looking at you know what the cost is. I mean, it's a big number, and if there's a way to do it and accomplish the same things at a lower rate, first it would have to be negotiated. Then it would have to be attempted in, in the planning stages. It's currently not possible as we sit here today. Is it practical to try to negotiate that into a, a contract? It depends on what condition we're in at the time. I, I would have to say no because the training of part-time police officers is is a difficult road to hoe. Very difficult road. Because of training of keeping their certification. If they don't have um, a paying job, a lot of them have other other jobs that they have to do to keep their life going, their family going, and then they have to attend 60 hours of training throughout the course of their, their cycle. That's what East Windsor bumped into years ago. Um, they were not able to keep them fully trained, and then your quality of, of policing goes down. Um, we're doing it right here with our quality, our training, and our supervision. We're a police department that has not been sued in six years, hasn't been successfully sued in 10 years, because we are hiring properly, we're training, uh, we're paying attention to risk reduction, policy development. We're doing it right, and I don't want to reduce um, the quality of personnel that we have. Where is the, where is the uh, training conducted? State, State um, Police? Uh, the yeah. Municipal Post C, Post Council, and then um, anything that gets approved by that, like our in-service could be at a different location, but it's the Police Officer Standards and Training Council by the State of Connecticut. You have it's to be a sports. certified instructor. I could teach in certain areas. You have to be a certified instructor in certain areas. And mainly we've been using um, a contracted firm that will do a lot of agencies at once. So we'll send our officers to a week-long training at Weathersfield PD, and they'll sit in a classroom with 40 other police officers from around the state who gather there to get their job. And how many training hours a year are there? Uh, there's 60 over a three-year period. So you try to get those as much up front, usually. We try to stretch it out as much as we can so we don't get hit all at once because of all of our certifications are staggered. They don't all occur at the same time. So we try to spread that out so it doesn't affect our budget. One, and, then and that's for the bare bones certification bare minimum, bones certification. not for advanced <coughs> stuff or special stuff like DUI investigation, accident investigation, things of that nature, interview interrogation. There's other 
trainings and things of that nature unattached. What's the profile of, of crimes in East Windsor? What are the big swingers and, and what are the, the ones that are, we don't have any murders, thankfully. What are the big, you know, uh, what are the, the big category of crimes? We do a host of everything um, from property crimes, thefts, burglary, stolen cars, accidents, medical aids, and we're, we're the recognized first responders in the town, so we have to go to medical uh, aids. We have a lot of service calls. Um, you know, it's it's a little higher than, than some communities because of our geographical setup and our socioeconomic makeup of our, of our population. We're on the highway, we're equal distance between two large cities, so you'll see different what types. Is Walmart a big swinger? Say that again? Is Walmart a big swinger? Walmart produces work for us, um, but there's a lot of locations in town that, um, that can produce work for us. We have some uh, homes and other areas that, that can, can produce work, but when you call the number or you call 911, we come. I, yeah, I hear by rumor that there is a lot of petty thefts or uh, car break-ins or whatever <coughs> at, in the Walmart uh, complex, inside and outside. Is that true? I don't know about petty thefts in the parking lot. No, it's, it's generally shoplifting. Shop 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 yeah. yeah. You get involved in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if somebody breaks into a car, obviously you're involved yeah. in that. Yeah. Is that a big workload? Say that again. Is that a big workload, that facility? We're there for that area. That's we're there frequently. As it's um, it, it's one of our our hire for that particular area. Mm -hmm. uh, it encompasses everything: accidents. And they're staffed by a large security department and cameras and their own of that nature. Yeah. Their own personnel are in there. And they're open 24 hours a day too. So when they bring people into our community. But those people that they hire, um, the company hires, they can't carry a gun. They can't make arrests, right? They can old people for you to arrest them? Correct. Going back to the OT, last question I have is, I didn't, I didn't, maybe I missed it, in this current fiscal year, what, what is your spend year to date and what's your, what's your projection? I can give you off the top of my head on you know, Gil, you were concerned that we were on a little on the low side. We're actually okay, and uh, we're around 9.8% left remaining in that line. But because we, in the other salary lines, we have overages because we haven't had one officer down currently. Uh, we have some other reasons why. No dispatcher came on late. Late, exactly. So we're going to ask for transfers. We Not should be fine. Over. Um, we also have, I believe, some DUI grant money that's outstanding. Not 100% sure on that. I thought it was like 7,500. No? Didn't we know that? Yeah. So the point about our, our seriousness, about our, our responsibility to the taxpayer, we will, we will go it out if we have to and then transfer to offset any added appropriations. In fact, I believe in the last three years, we've given back large sums of money every year from your budget, from yeah, somewhere in the, to the tune last year, sixty-eight thousand. The year before, seventy something. The year before, ninety something. Um, our commission and uh, management of the police department met years ago, and it will not be earn it or have it and burn it type of thing. We don't buy five thousand tires at the end of the year. We we turn the money back, um, and not just in small numbers. So we give you our public safety plan or i.e. the budget, that's what, what our public safety plan is. And if we can um, do it for less or an unforeseen circumstance such as an officer retiring, um, you know, and, and we're, we're struggling for candidates right now, so that money will be there available to transfer or turn back at the end. You're saying if you don't uh, have lavish uh, retirement parties in Las Vegas for your <laughs> Your employees. No, I, I can, and I like the question you asked <coughs> with salary and where we stand, I, I know times are tough. The world is, is tough to live in, um, but we don't have anything lavish here. Our pensions aren't lavish, and I know some people will argue that they are, but um, we're not a Cadillac uh, plan by any stretch of the imagination. We'll stretch a buck till it screams for mercy, 
and will provide a good, high quality product um, to the community that we serve. That's important. Is there a recording under that chair? Because everybody that sat there said that to us. <laughs> well, sir, I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. No, I, like it. I, don't like it. no, I, no, I like it. And you had a, you had a <clears throat> smile on your face, so I'm glad I could provide that. I can <laughs> tell you this though, um, this career is is very important to me. I've I've done this since I was 20 years old, and I speak from the heart, and it's the truth. How long have you been here, Chief? 15 years in East Windsor. Yeah. Loved every minute of it. Actually, I have. Um, we can all have different opinions, but you know what? I get it. I understand what all you folks are about. You've had the difficult decisions to make, not me. You want information? I'll give you information. Don't beat me up for giving you the information, because I'm not going to beat you up for making the tough decisions. We get it. You're going to tell us what That's we work with, That's what should work. and we're going to make it work. I can tell you now, <clears throat> board after board that I've sat before after a course of a year or two, and they get to know us, and they understand that I'm not blowing smoke, I'm talking truth, passion from the heart. And they say, we don't know how you do what you do with how much you have. Well, I hope to get there with all of you someday, but <coughs> these are the facts as they are, and I'll make it work with whatever decision okay, good. you folks make. So you're going to end up being on budget with rotating that? We should be. We should be. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Get the longevity, get the training. Okay. I have a question about accurate that um, did 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 you get their breakpoints of how much they charge per for search, are you at a break point spending $2,400? Have you looked at pooling a contract with Windsor Locks or Enfield and so forth? Because that company is all about selling units. And if you pool it, now can you get a substantial reduction for that? If you still get your same access, can you get a an access code to do it. I'm very familiar with that. <coughs> we like it obviously because it, you know, I can run your name and collect or yep. NCIC and see if you're wanted for a murder out of Arizona. But if you're an applicant for the police department yep. and you've defrauded your yep. landlord and you owe them $100,000, we don't want you to be a cop. <coughs> um, go ahead. That $2,400, we don't, that's it. That's a flat rate. That's an unlimited use. And we have never went over that. We've never been charged anymore, yeah. at least that I know of since I've been there. Okay, because yeah. it's based on units. We, don't, we have you limited don't users. users. We only have one unit, and not even a unit. We sign on with a code, and yeah. there's only, I think, only two or three of us have codes. So if I need the work done, yeah. Yeah. I go to the detective right. and say, yeah. do this for me, so that the department isn't having 26 people. Yeah. You don't need that. Maybe so your usage is way under it. You know what it is, you might want to look at that. Not, we will. Not that that's a big number, but no, that's but how they sell it. Yeah. I had a question on, again, not a big number, uh, but the cost associated with promotional testing. What is, what is that? Next to the last one on the line, on that page. Oh, okay. So we just had a sergeant retire. Um, <coughs> Promotions, not, not. Promotion and rank, not promotion of right. it's, I, I really yeah. it. it's to become a sergeant, a lieutenant, that yeah. type of stuff. There's companies, um, if you don't hire uh, a standardized, accredited national tester, then you end up getting sued and losing and things of that nature. So they do all the testing for you from the written exams to the assessment center to the oral boards. And they are certified so, people, so you're protected. And they've been sued in the past and stood the test of time. So we and that has not affected you. The fact yeah, that they get sued. Exactly. You pay for that insurance or sick right. by going to a certain There's place. no tampering by us. They come in with all the questions. We don't know any of it. So there's no political Mickey Finning or anything. There's no accusations, no grievances and things of like that. They come on site and you send people. 
whatever we decide uh, at the time, we'll, we'll put out a, a request for service and take a look at it, but usually they come to And are there, are there people who compete for that, or do you go to the same company all the time? No, we've used different We've used different, uh, different, you know, some, we, there was one individual that we liked the outcome, and he was well tested across the state. He's since retired. So uh, we've tried a couple of different things just to see what, what gives us the best results. I think we're on like our second or third uh, try right now. And these are generally one person. They're not. They're not companies you go to. No, they are certified people. They're companies. They, they're companies. that have people that are that do it. Mm -hmm. The copier is lined at twenty nine hundred dollars. Is that a rental for a copier? Yeah, at least. Yeah. Is, is that the same that we have town wide? That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's your we, share. We you put that together? I'm sorry? You put the lease together? We think we're the only one towns. towns. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the next page, the $1,800 for Department of Photography, et cetera, et cetera. Cost of batteries for cameras. Now with the digital age, I'm very curious. <coughs> we spent eighteen hundred dollars to do that. Uh, actually, you know what gets expensive that we frequently use out of line is when they have to print out um, evident photographs for the file. So they use a the color printer, so a lot of times we'll if, if they're really burning up the color printer, oh, the we'll get that yeah, yeah. for the cartridges. So we only have a limited number of color printers in the police department, but we find that we hit that occasionally. Especially when it's going to court and you have to produce that color photographic evidence. Also, once um, we get, generally we wait till the end of the year and see where we're at in that line, and then we will maybe uh, take a look at our cameras and see if they need to be replaced. Uh, we like we have some point and shoots that we use digital point and shoots mm -hmm. that we use in the field um, and also <coughs> the bureau has two sets of high-end um, cameras that they use for crime scenes. Mm -hmm. So the fields are subjected sometimes in July the trunk gets really hot. <coughs> yeah, and they get February is really cold and so I think they have a little <coughs> short of of USB drives. I don't know what bulk purchase means for that. that is, that's exactly what it means. They're cheaper to buy them in bulk. We go through USB drives like crazy because what happens is when we go to a convenience store incident, robbery, assault, whatever, yeah. in a convenience store, generally speaking, what we do take is that thumb drive, yeah. give it to them, they burn whatever video evidence they have to the thumb drive, we take that now the court wants us to seize that and put that into evidence. So then that goes into evidence for, could be forever. You can't just store it in the system? No, oh, absolutely. They want it on that thumb drive that they got. And that's what we do. So we go through a lot of thumb drives. And you maintain that yep. thumb drive with some kind of file? Evidence. Mm -hmm. That's why the state is broken. It makes no sense. Not today's terms. Um, Don't worry, it'll change in six months. Cost of feeding, <laughs> cost of feeding prisoners. Uh, if, if your people arrest somebody, they're incarcerated. Uh, we have to pay for their yeah. the food while they're incarcerated. Yes. We can't bill them for that. No. How many people do you actually have there that long to feed them? As a number, this gives you a number. It's thirty dollars and change a week. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's what a, we do. That's about it. We yeah. figure out how many people we hold. And, uh, yeah, we do the analysis. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't give it to you on the top of my head. Yeah. But we don't just make up the numbers. We don't have a jail here anymore. And it took a long time since we did. I heard there was something in there that used to be. My cousin used to have a really? grocery store down here. That, and when he had it, he left the old jail cell and he used to store stuff in. Yeah. And one time, some kid was smart ass again than me. Went in, closed the door, and <laughs> locked it. <laughs> Cured him. He didn't do it again. Oh, <laughs> so, it, so, where do you incarcerate people? Where do they go? We have, we have cell cells. Oh, you have a cell? Yeah. Oh, really? We, we should take a tour of the department. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd like to do that sometimes. So if you get arrested on Friday and you can't make bail, um, or, or we're mandated to hold you because of a court ordered bond, you'll stay in our jail until Monday morning. When one cell? Court. You have two male cells and one female cell. Mm -hmm. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. The last line of purchase repair. Replacement of apartment equipment, printer, and fax machine and cleaning. Okay. First question is, how is that different from um, the 5440 line, general office materials and computer? It seems like all that stuff would be under there to begin with. And um, to be honest, I've never heard of cleaning the fax machine. One and two, fax machines are not in vogue. That everything comes through a computer. You wish. <laughs> yeah. We wish to. <laughs> we wish to. <laughs> My voicemail doesn't even work anymore. We absolutely need a fax machine because the state of Connecticut, there's certain documents they only fax to us. That's I, I understand, so. but so why would they fax it to? They, no one knows that you're faxing it to a computer. The current you system does not have the capability that we have to use that system. I believe we were supposed to. We discussed yeah. doing it, but it was it was a bit of a problem yeah. with that particular machine for whatever reason, because it would need a dedicated machine. And they fax because for security, is that it? Well, they fax is because it has to be, somebody has to see it coming through right away, I'll because it, it may require an action. For example, order of protection. Order of protection is issued by the judge from the bench that particular day. That goes in the system. We receive a fax that goes that, that's monitored 24 hours a day. It can't go to somebody's email. It's got to go to some place where there's a live, a live person. That live person. But I mean, if, you had, if you off. had that in the system, you'd have people there that are there 24 hours a day, like a dispatcher and so forth. And I'm just thinking the paper <coughs> one, two, the machine and so forth. I mean, it, I don't even know if we sold them anymore. Yeah, we, but, and but I never heard of cleaning one. Yeah. We but again, that whole that line. Work, we do it all the time. Just just the amount of uh, documents that we scan at work, where, where I work anyway. Some of the stuff coming through are arrest warrants <laughs> and things that make you take official action. No, I understand. Um, we, we, use, we use the fax machines. Uh -huh. but I, like I said, this, this line, you got the 1250 in. It seems like all that stuff would be under the 5440 line. And that 5440 line, is that an allocation from a bigger number or is that a standalone number? Oh, it's, it's, the, it's, the dollar it's the dollar amount to spend. You know what I'm saying? Looks like all that stuff would just be under that. <coughs> Just trying to be as transparent as possible. No, no, right. we're spending money. Yeah. Those, were the long, those were the sort of bills that sent to and yeah. about it. But those are all just general office stuff. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Next page. Um, the the um, college fund that's here, you know, under the different categories. My my question there is that. What, what are the requirements to to get a course and get it reimbursed? And what do you reimburse? It's got to be an accredited university or college. Yeah. They have to get a C or better for a grade. It's collective bargaining. It's addressed in there. Yeah. So I don't it, it's all spelled out in the contract. Um, and it's tuition in the books, right? And we're dealing with four separate collective bargaining agreements. So I'm not sure it's all C, Chief. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. Sure. Might they be do not attain that C grade. In the police yeah. side, it's a C. I know that. It might be a B and other ones. But there's four collective bargaining agreements that have educational reimbursement. We're dealing with police, dispatcher, clerical, and supervisors in our, in our facility. So, so if we you don't have get a C, agreements. you don't pay for it. Correct. Okay. We've never the heard that The burden falls on the uh, person taking the course. Which has never happened. And it never happened, huh? Well, and the agreement calls that you have to pay for the books, too? Yeah, I believe so. But of course, it's diverse, it's dispersed for some of them, it's like that, I believe. 
it's dispersed amongst how many people are taking classes and things of that nature. So. Do they still use books? You know, yes, sometimes, yeah. Yeah, because they're pretty expensive. They're very expensive yeah. books, too. Mm -hmm. But other towns, they don't reimburse the books, it's just the courts. No, they do. I mean, I, I look, so. Well, I'll they do. There. Where'd you look? Lumfield. Where yeah. else? Uh, a couple other towns out there. The agency front, we did almost everything. I don't want to be confrontational, but when I say I look, I look, number one. Okay. Two, I gave you one name, and that wasn't enough. I don't want to be confrontational. Well, we're, I, don't, I want to understand what we're signing up for. What we're signing up for is to meet our contractual obligations. If it says it, we pay it, and we monitor it. Mm -hmm. It's been negotiated, so it's our job to no, understand administer that. the contract. I was just asking, how well, much do you pay? What do you pay? Yeah. Uh, the next line at 2478. I understand belonging to different associations and all that kind of stuff is very helpful, but the Chiefs of Police Secretaries Association? Yes. What, what does that provide us as a benefit? So she's been a member for 30 years, 15 years before I got here, she was working here. She's part of a professional association that provides her with training. Uh, they have monthly meetings. Every she, year? That anytime she wants to go to them, she has networking capabilities, they share policy. Um, there's a whole host of things that it does, but she's been a member in there for many, many years. And we think that after 30 years she can teach a course. Yeah, you know what, this, this job, you wait 12 hours and it moves on by you. The law changes all the time, um, procedures change all the time, and you have to stay abreast of all of that. Mm -hmm. so. the, the ammunition you have, um, most of that must be spent in target practice, <coughs> is it? Yeah, we, we do training and it's also duty, duty rounds as well. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between uh, just information, a training round, and one you'd carry for lethal yes. force? Yes. Because sometimes they get old, though. Uh, yeah, when we carry them around outside in the weather, they get rained on, snowed on, sun on, you know, the whole nine yards. So mm -hmm. we only buy as much as we need to function for the year. So the, like the shotgun the ammunition, that, that obviously it's rarely used. So you just, whatever is in there for a year, you take it out and then replace it? Is that it depends on the condition of the ammunition. Um, we only replace it when we need to. Can you tell? Yeah, we, you know, sometimes you gotta train, sometimes you have to practice, so on and so forth, I mean, qualify. Can you tell if, if ammunition is good, uh, just from <coughs> observation, or how do you know that you don't have to replace this box of ammunition he has been here for five years. Well, the training ammunition is spent throughout the year. The duty ammunition can last for more than a year. And there is, and there is no age criteria for the uh, for, for either one of them? A bullet's a bullet and it stays okay. Huh? <clears throat> so the training ammunition, that's not in here? I believe it's all in there. Unless I missed it. So the training the ammunition, 1243. Huh? Right here, Charlie. Oh, okay. Page 11. Okay. Let me see that. Okay. Next page. Cost of uniform things on. That's all. The uh, officers are not responsible for that at all. And buying uniforms, the town buys those also, is that correct? Yeah, we provide them with uh, an annual amount that was negotiated in the CBA. And they claim, well, which that number has come down a lot over the years. So if somebody doesn't wear a uniform, like the detectives, do they pay for that claim? We require them to wear business attire. They're entitled to the same yearly clothing allowance and the same yearly cleaning for that equipment. We want them to look good, look professional, 
they'll act professional and the community will, will appreciate that. But that wouldn't be a requirement though, is it? It's, it's just a collective, collective bargaining agreement. agreement. Even though it's not a uniform. It's it clearly spelled out. Pretty interesting. So your detectives get a uh, clothing allowance also? Same as the entire department. Yeah. Say again? Same number as the department. I had a question on vehicle parts and repairs. Lynn does not do any repair, maintenance or repair work, does he? No. Where do you go to get that done? We go to a uh, contract that we put out to bid. Uh, you go out for competitive bid yes, every year? No. Uh, what we generally do is we do it one year, and we give it with the ability as long as they meet the standards and they don't have any increases. We generally will extend it up to three years, and then we'll rebid. You don't have to vote dealer. To it. It's with some work we do. Yeah. We Especially work that into the bid. Yeah. We write that right into the bid that they're uh, under certain circumstances that we may have to take the, the vehicle to the dealer to have it worked on. Because it's a police vehicle, you get a new one. Is the warranty different than a regular car? Yes. Do they reduce it? And actually, no, it's actually higher. A little bit higher. Really? The sedans, they give us a like very low very warranty. warranty. Yeah, that surprises me. I have a question on tasers, just because it's, it's a new item, I guess. Are, uh, you, are, is it going to be every year you're going to uh, replace the tasers? Is this a capital purchase? Yeah, yeah. In this particular case, we have um, several tasers that are getting um, kind of old. In fact, they're, uh, we talked about it in the last commission meeting. We're going to try to replace them. Yeah, yeah. So we, have. Yeah, we, have, we have six tasers, one is, you can't, it doesn't function, and one we're having difficulty downloading the data from, because after you fire the taser, uh, or even point it at somebody anymore, we have to report to the state, and so you have to download the data to show how long the trigger was pulled, whether the trigger was pulled. So that there is a chip in there that actually keeps track of there is. How, long, how often, kind of thing? And you're just going to buy few more. So we'd like to buy a couple, yeah. replace our aging stock, and uh, we're actually working on a plan to maybe get some more. So you don't know if they work or not work, is that it, or if they do work? They no, do they work. work. The current, current ones that Do you have one with you? I want to no. see if you try it on bombs. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't hurt me. It's not fun, I can tell you. Yeah. <laughs> do you uh, have some way of testing those? Do you have a test rig where you can pull a trigger and it tells you how much voltage has gone through a target or whatever? They have a battery. An they're, they're set. They're set. So it each has a battery that's attached to it. The battery has a number that indicates whether, you know, the percentage of charge that's in it. Um, but they're set. They, they, I believe it's 50,000 um, that oh. they, volts that they push out. And every single one is supposed to be the same. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it, too. The taser recommends that to replace very frequently. Obviously, they sell tasers, but they want you to uh, replace them a lot more frequently than we do. But How many do you have to have these days? We, we like to have, we would like to have as many as 10 available. That way, if some are people on the shift, if they're out on a call, then our oncoming people could have them. But currently, like I said, we have five functioning ones and one that doesn't download data. There are some departments who buy every single officer their own individual taser mm -hmm. and they can go anywhere on duty and not worry about trying to get one out of the patrol room waiting for a cop to come off shift and take mm -hmm. his or hers. So it's a taser pump. So that would be for two, I believe. Yeah, that was, number was actually a little bit low because um, we were trying to get Taser to cooperate with us and give us a bid, but they finally got around to it, which was after this went through. They're about $1,700 a piece. $1,700? $1,700 a piece. But then you have to buy um, holsters that go along with it and cartridges. <clears throat> you can buy them directly from them? Yes. Oh, that's unusual. Something's good. Okay, are we through? Um, 
car wash. Why don't you buy him a sponge and let him wash it? So. <laughs> High school kids. Yeah, I would, watches are fine. I'm a deal, but I'm not the stickers on the car. <laughs> Just about a dollar less than that, and we're saving money at that point. <coughs> what is a stipend? You want to emergency again? management? Yeah, I'm sorry. Did I jump ahead? No, that's fine. That's an next one. Yeah. That's the uh, amount of money that the uh, deputy chief and I can get to run the lovely um, emergency management department. Actually, it's not bad. I like I mean, that. Was, that was fun. And we, it was interesting. We had a, a Did you just say thrill? it was fun? Yeah, it was. <laughs> for me. <laughs> totally not interesting. Yeah. Is, is, you, you each get that amount, or does that amount for the two? That's for both. So okay. it's split in half. And the split in half. And yeah, actually, and the secretary. From you know all three. The way you sound. Is is that something that should be offloaded from you to somebody else? Because other towns, the chief of police generally doesn't do that, right? There's about 15 chiefs in the state of Connecticut that do do it, and this is why. In a community like this, if your fire chief has a full-time job, say, in a prison or another mm -hmm. fire department in a, a massive emergency, they're called to those full-time positions mm -hmm. and they're operating in that capacity. This is my full-time job, so you're getting me as the police chief no matter what, and for $4,000 a year, I'll take on all the duties and responsibilities. I can tell you now, um, it's a very time-consuming thing. Um, I get it. Sometimes it is fun. Well, but it was for the drill. Right. And to be to really see it happen. Right. And on the back side yeah. of that drill, we had hours and hours of paperwork and mandated reports and the, the grant we write for it and the maintenance of it, the training, the night meetings. It's it's an certification. You have to do, you have to take courses. So the, yeah. the certification course list is up to about fourteen or fifteen courses now, of which we have all of that annually. Or uh, no, oh, the, but oh. they seem to be adding them annually. <laughs> when I first started this a few years ago, there was like three classes, and now it's it's literally 13 or 14 of them. Um, but in, when the chips are down, it's like having car insurance. You don't want to really think about it or worry about it, but when you need it, damn it, you really need it. Mm -hmm. So what you get is him and I. Um, we were asked to do it temporarily, and that was six years ago. You're still doing um, temporarily. Yeah, I'll, I'll still do it. I get it. Um, I, I probably am the best person to do it in a town where I'm a full-time um, employee and I'm coming here no matter what anyway. I've slept in a station during storms and emergencies and things like that. Um, Bites on your wife. Um, she's, <laughs> again, she's a full-time um, first responder, so she's going to her full-time work. So. But that's to answer your question. Um, a lot of times it's fire chiefs, um, but if that's when they're full time, you know. So I, I think that's what they saw with the. With the I know thing. in South Windsor it's not. Or a separate person, yeah, separate and, person. and they end up they're paying like um, Colin, uh, Simsbury. They have a separate person, and they're paying twenty five to thirty thousand dollars for that service. Yeah. You're getting this service <laughs> for, on the salary side for what is it nine grand? Yeah. And I, I think it helps to have you, because you're, you're here in the town full time, you know the personnel in the town, like exactly. Lenny, the planning, yeah. the public works, and, and who you had to call, because you right. call them every day anyway. And they, they, yeah. We've come a long way, they do great work, we have very good fire departments here, mm -hmm. when the chips are down they respond, but what we now do is, as a team is we all go into the same room, unified command, and the chief sitting there, first selectman sitting there, Len is sitting there. So no matter where the emergency goes, Lenny, what do you got for resources? Okay, let's do this. So we work together as a really good team. Is there any time that, that because you are the police chief, that with this job, is, is there a conflict? No. No, my best interest is in, in the town. Um, and there's you know what I'm saying. I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. the good news is that something you would do as a police chief, you wouldn't do it there, vice versa. No, it, it augments it well. There's never been a conflict. And as long as you're right here, so the next page is 10 400 and it's communications. And uh, 
I struggle a little with. I know with, with town dispatches, but the radio system, could you talk a little about that? We have one antenna here and one and down in Warehouse Point, I guess. And yeah, there, yeah, there's radio systems through town. Um, I'm not an expert on any of this. I, I was asked to manage this line several years ago, probably about nine years ago, and I've just kind of been doing it right along. Um, the infrastructure, main infrastructure is at the water tower. And we have a, a shed on that water tower site off Prospect Hill Road. Wow. Um, and it um, talks to this through a microwave link uh, between back here where the antenna is. There's a radio room there as well. So they kind of communicate with each other via microwave. Um, do we pay for that installation? We have to pay rent on that tower. We do, we do not. No, this this is our tower here. That's our tower there. But it's mounted on their on their tank. No, there? actually, we have a tower. Oh, there. you have a tower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we there's no cost that the only cost that we really have on that line is several years ago. Um, I noted as we were doing this work that we would have a kind of, <coughs> excuse me a failure of a system. And we would run around like the fire department and try to fix the failure of the system. Mm -hmm. And it, the money that it cost us to fix that failure was not really working out as good as if we had a service agreement. So we did a bid for a service agreement. We went out to bid. Marcus actually has our service agreement right now. Before that, we used another company called Moose Down Communication. They had our service agreement. And so we paid them so much a month. I believe it's thirteen hundred dollars a month, yep. which means they will cover all of the cost of any of our major infrastructure. So if that microwave link goes down, they will come out and replace that microwave link and not send us a bill. Um, that's everything. And that's a fixed price. That's contract. a fixed price. Yep. Uh, he gets sixteen thousand, whether he puts in two hours or ten thousand dollars. You think they're pretty reliable at company? Yes, they are. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> okay, that was, that was a good product. That's a question I had. That's about $1,600, and this is about 10000 more uh, on the list here, radio system. So where's, where's the other 10000 I, I don't really have I didn't yeah. know we were going to. Could I take a look at it? Sure. Thank you. Uh, go to the next page, I think, where you, you can see the bill. So the, oh, the remainder is, is, is for, um, no, um, is we kind of like to keep a, between nine, eight, nine, ten thousand dollars in reserve in case some of our equipment that's not covered uh, by the infrastructure service agreement. And that is portable radios, for example. If we have a portable radio go down, they're about four fifty to five hundred dollars a radio. Now define our, we're not talking about just the police department. We're talking about the town. I'm talking about town water. Yeah, but I say yeah, that we're, not, we're not in us. No, no, this isn't. No, okay, and I appreciate that. that's police, yeah, fire, yeah. everything, yeah. public yeah. works, every, everybody who has a radio. Yeah. Mm. How um, portable radios are throwaways. Um, they go down, you throw them away. Sometimes, sometimes we do, we do bench repairs on them. We'll send them to Marcus to do a bench. I just uh, sent six radios out uh, probably six months ago for bench repairs, and the cost was. I think a couple hundred bucks for six radios. It was worth getting them fixed. Mm. Sometimes they are throwaways, though. Mm. They're pretty decent, solid Kenwood radios that we've had for, oh, what, almost 15 years, maybe? It was pre-main. Yeah, pre so 16 years. They're holding up pretty well. Mm. Yeah, uh, so if we can bench repair them, we will. If, we, mm. if they say they, they can't fix them, we throw them off. Do these and, people refix those? Or yes, Marcus. They, they fix them. Yeah. Oh. And they charge us uh, whatever their hourly rate is. I think it's hundred. Beyond this number. Yes. Yeah, because those are named portables, mobile radios, excuse me. And again, town wide motor radios. Like Len has mobile radios in his vehicles. Um, wherever there's a mobile radio on the fire engines, mm -hmm. if those go down, they need to be serviced. Mm -hmm. Or an installation, if one goes down and they have to swap it out and put a new one in. That are you the point of contact for that, the police department? You take care of all the Yeah, I've kind of been the guy, go to guy on that for, like well, I said. Well, when we first became a team, the, the budget was always expended over the amount that was in there. 
people were begging for batteries and portables and there was no control over it. Um, the elected officials at that time approached us and said, can you take this line over? So that's what we've been doing for seven years. So we work together on a, it, it doesn't come up very, I came up probably Every once in a while. three months ago, we had some purchases that needed to be, uh, Melissa was looking for some new radios, replace a lost one, and replace a damaged one, I think I went in the water. Um, and we work together, I'll take the uh, request in, submit it to Bob to take a look at it, make sure he's happy with it, and we're fine. We sign off on it and we push it through. That's good. So this contract is negotiated for what period? Three years? One year. One, one year. Yeah, time. that one. Yeah. Twelve months. Yeah, we found it to, be, to keep some competitive. And one year. you go off a competitive bid? We have, yes. Mm -hmm. is, that, is Bruce still there? Yes, he is. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah, I was just on the phone with him two days ago. Good. The dispatch talent. I'm a little confused to that amount of 26000 and what's on the page after his page. What is the 26000 yeah, yeah. yeah. It's Robert Fire and these ones are ambulance. Yeah, so to explain Tomlin, they are a regional dispatch center that we right. kick medical emergencies too because we're not big enough to meet the obligation for medical dispatching. Yep. Once the dispatcher starts medical for the fire department and everything <coughs> and fire dispatching, um, you're required to stay on the line the entire time. So if another call comes in, yep. we're, we're only running one dispatcher minimum on a shift and they're locked out, they couldn't even answer 911. So that medical, that fire dispatch mm -hmm. goes to town. Okay. So you have in here just for the ambulance in Broadbrook? Right. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. The whole town okay. is forty-one thousand five hundred, right. but we don't pay for Warehouse Point. For Warehouse Point, okay. Are you, are you sure that that this isn't in the Broadbrook's one? Wasn't in their budget? No. I don't think that ever and has never been in their no. budget. Just so really you know, know, sir, we didn't prepare that. No, that's we don't submit. That. Appreciate we you just asking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay, that good. Is that good? Any more questions? Well, thank you for I your patience. I just had a, a couple. I want to go back to the beginning. I didn't want to consume time up front, but if <coughs> we're looking at. Um, Objectives, I guess, and accomplishments and stuff like that. Those are so broad. I don't know what the hell you said. Uh, you, I'm sure you have uh, more specific, more focused uh, goals and priorities, and more focused uh, uh, accomplishments. Uh, I just like to have a brief discussion on that. Like, for example. Um, and we brought it up here for previous before. Um, as I see it, you know, as as a goal, of, one of them certainly is to protect the schools. We're going to talk about that some other time. But that's a specific goal. You must have other specific goals other than uh, this general statement here. You know? Uh, of course we do. And is, is there any reason that that's not in here? We make it more no, and that, that's our most urgent needs at this time. At the time we were writing it, we had not received the funding for um, our CAD and our MS. That's why it talks about the technological um, integration for the department. Um, over the years that I've been here, we've accomplished a lot through reduction of crime. We've seen upwards of 25 to 40 percent reductions. Um, we've police the greater population needs like the elderly or specific to locations like Mill Pond and have seen tremendous uh, decreases. This was the need at the time. That's what we were seeing uh, was our ability to do data-driven law enforcement, to do hot spotting, things of that nature, so we can direct our, our efforts in a, in a 
a more technological way, and now we're in the process of, of being able to get that software to do that. So that's why it was mentioned in, in this year's budget. Chief, is there any, as I said, and I'm sure you haven't, you have more detailed goals, I'm sure. Is yeah. there, and it's probably, you know, probably one or two pages of text. Uh, is that something we could have? Um, anytime you want to meet and discuss goals, we'll discuss goals. But you don't have them written down for the department? We often write them down, and as we accomplish them, um, we move on to the next ones, adjust ones that, oh, yeah, I um, understand like that. one specific goal that's been a strong desire is to achieve state accreditation. Um, we've worked um, hard at doing it, and we could probably, how far along are we, 80%, 75%, probably. somewhere in that area? And what is that? State accreditation is a standardized policy um, procedure to make sure you're doing things in accordance to industry standard that's best uh, for risk reduction, liability reduction, and things of that nature. Outside auditors will come and verify that your policy is set, that you're actually following the policy by looking at your paperwork and computer entries and shift deployments or whatever they may be. Would your certification document be different than Bloomfield or? Uh, no, it's all done through Coast C. Yeah. It's all done through Coast C. Police, Police Officers Standards. Standards and Trainings Council in Meriden. Mm -hmm. And then they come and they, they make sure that you know, you're doing what you say you're doing. So that's one of the things. <clears throat> Sometimes though the standards when you have to meet them cost money. So if there's a cell block issue or whatever you know, sometimes monetarily it can, it can be there. Mm -hmm. I got a question that's kind of bugging me. I've lived here quite a while. Uh, you guys are doing a good job from what I can say. And yet, uh, in, in addition, there's, there's no place in this town there's no road street that I would ever think of my safety being an issue of walking down, other than the cars hitting you, you know, but that, you know, the neighborhoods and so forth. There's just none that, that and, and I know every street in the town. And yet, when I was doing some analytics and looking at the crime rate in East Windsor, which is very concerning to me that our crime rate is the fourth highest in the state. In fact, it's ahead of Bridgeport. On a per capita basis? On, on a, well, they do it in ratios, you know, uh, on, they take it and blend it to 100,000, you know, yep. as, the, yep. as the mark because the city's being larger. So, you know, it's broken down in analytics that way. Now, and it's, it's higher than, um, or, or fourth, Fourth highest crime rate, and, and you look at um, our population in comparison to um, Ellington, uh, substantially less, and their population is uh, almost 5,000 more. Uh, it's higher than Enfield's, and Enfield is four and a half times more. Looking at Summers, it's higher, way higher than Summers. It's like triple Summers, and their population is almost identical to ours. Um, looking at Stafford, population is almost identical, and it's it's a quarter of of, of what theirs is. Um, and I have a couple other ones here that I looked at, you know, that are nearby stuff. Um, higher than Suffield's by three times, and their population is like 3,000 more. Um, Tallinn, it's a quarter of it, and their population is 3,000 more people. And South Windsor, it's way more than South Windsor, and they're two and a half times us. So I would think people make problems, you know, for the most part, it's not inanimate objects. Populations are higher, and yet 
we're the fourth highest crime rate in the state. And yet, like I said, I don't fear walking anywhere or being anywhere in this town. I do. You know, in Bridgeport and certain people do there too, and Hartford, New Haven, you know, those bigger cities and that kind of thing. So what is it that I'm missing in that stuff? Because it doesn't connect to me. So first I would ask where you got your statistics Listen from that, that put us in fourth. I, I believe that that might not be accurate, but let's let's talk about the numbers. You're absolutely right. We are a safe community. The officers here work very hard to prevent and deter crime. And in fact, we have seen large reductions. This is what happens. The numbers you're discussing are primarily related to thefts and property crimes. And we're in a situation where you talk about Summers or Ellington, um, that there are certain specific dynamics that make crime get counted in a certain way. I-91 changes the ball game. Equal distance between two cities, proximity to an airport, being on a river, all changes what comes to your community. The socioeconomic population that we have is different than Suffield. It's different than um, Ellington. Our service needs are different. We also have a situation where the towns and communities you're talking about, Stafford, Summers, they need to come up 140 to go to the highway so we have certain call needs. So as people shop here, they go to Southern Auto, they go to Walmart, they go to Big Y, they go to our hotels and, and things of that nature. Our low population of 11,400 um, on that property crime um, statistic is what elevates that number. So we have extremely low violent crime. Um, our officers are really good at patrolling, really good at deterring, and then really good at investigating and closing cases afterwards. So um, it's it's not uh, reflective <coughs> when we try to compare communities. Like but when you look at Bridgeport, you know, couldn't have a busier road than 95 passing through well, there. They're, they're one of yeah. the factors as well, and they have Close a higher road. crime rate on the violence side to reflect But that. the overall crime rate is what's reported, and, you know, and, and we're ahead of them. And that's what I'm saying. I, I think, don't get it. But I actually, I'm starting to do a work. I'm starting to look at stuff. And it depends on what year you're looking at, too. Exactly. Um, mm -hmm. Like, you had, 90, or 2014 was a big year. And then, and then just as you said, you've gone down, and, and then in 2016, which is the latest one we had, went from 4,100 down to, to see where we're two, yeah, yeah. It was nearly half of what it was two years ago. Are these from the UCRs that are reported? Well, no, these are not UCRs. This is, actually, I, I think this is the website I get it from. And if that's the case, then why would it go 50% less so you guys, and it's when all the it's cool larceny that. primarily is the driving factor in those things. Uh, so you guys, what's that? We've got some more too. Go back to 13 and 12, 11. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we went up to 4,000 4, 4, 4, per whatever. I'm sure they're, they're, they're calling the, the UCR data. That's what this is. Mm -hmm. Calling UCR and putting it in their own format. Mm -hmm. If the UCR data is collected by the FBI, and I believe that's just data that's called from there. Um, but it's data you submit. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. If you look at it, there's a whole warning about um, trying to compare one com uh, community to another community and compare uh, yeah. per capita crime in one community to per capita crime in another community. Yeah, and that's, that's, that, that's what I'm looking at, and yet, again, the populations are more than us, you know, the towns are near us, you have, you know, South Windsor is less than us, and they've got 84 buzzing through there, and they've got Route 5 buzzing through there, and the um, population is two and a half times greater than us. And you know the news today was about you know Delta moving, and I'd like to have Delta come to East Windsor. And I'm not kidding when I say that. And you know if you look at this, that would be concerning because they look at everything when they're doing that. 
And I, I just want to know what, because we're paying an awful lot, as you know, for the police department. And what's amiss here to have the crime rate so high? And why did it drop over the one year by 50%? <coughs> because what, did, the did per capita numbers, because when you compare per capita numbers for a community who has such a small population compared to a Bridgeport, the community that any, any it buffers. Yeah, it, any it change buffers. is going to show as a spike because it's per capita. It's but per the, thousand people. That's Bridge, what Bridgeport has 15 times. <coughs> right, exactly. Right. But the number of bigger buffer of crime is dropped. We're reporting what's occurred. I mean, but so it's far less. If that's what's occurred, then that's what occurred. Did you put more people out there? Or, you know, the We're one, reporting I mean, what's occurred. It, it, the guy that's in analytics and numbers, it's just, there's got to be a reason for it, and I don't see it. You know, why, why did the numbers drop like that? That's what I'm trying to understand from you, because you guys do it. And well, that's what I try to explain. Come. A lot of the, the situation is coming from outside of our community. It's a non-resident that is committing a crime on very attractive um, locations in town. So. We report what occurs, and those are the numbers that are in there. So and I remember a while back, it was, we had a smash and grabs were going on. And that, those and that wasn't just this town, that yeah. was a no. group that we ended up catching yeah. that was working eight or nine towns. Mm -hmm. And us, combined with the regionalization that we're involved in, we work to put together cases to solve these. And when these incidents occur like that, for example, we focus on that issue and deal with that. We try to get public awareness out there. We get people lock their cars, make sure they have their keys. And now a lot of cars on nearby. Car. It's and an attractive it's, location. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. a lot of places that are selling cars off of the auctions. Yeah, so it's a, it's a, it's a, always an effort to do our job. I mean, it's ever changing because the problems are ever changing. You gotta remember the, the population that comes through East Windsor, a, a lot of them stop in East Windsor, whereas opposed to Bridgeport, I'm driving through right now, I'm not stopping. <laughs> well, but, but East Windsor is uh, Listen, the, the Bridgeport has has Metro North. Yeah, well, I, I know. There's a lot of people just saying, you know, highway tens highways. of thousands, okay, that ride Metro North that get off there, get on there. Right. I mean, but, but it's probably a whole most dynamic there. Probably most uh larcenies don't occur from somebody who's riding the train usually something I would imagine in a park. I'm just speculating. Um, You're waiting for the getaway train? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be here at 13 so, It's late. But, the, but, the, but there is a, a large population, uh, or a large amount of people anyway, that do come into East Windsor. Um, and just using the auto auction as an example, there's thousands. Uh, but that's one day week, Wednesdays. And it's not just one day week. But the cars stay there all week is what we're saying. So. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm just looking for I'm, some, I'm just throwing some, some logic to this as, as to why it would be so, like so different. You know, money. I mean, I get Bridgeport, New Haven, Waterbury, you know, and Hartford. I don't get us being in the top four. I just don't. It's a problem when you look at it, like I said, when you're looking at per capita numbers, they tend to get skewed. I mean, if we had... I don't know if you're an answer time, but maybe you can... We're giving you the we answer. Gave it. We're giving you the answer. answer. Yeah. Like yeah. I mean, if we had a homicide... Well, the the map doesn't say that. No. If we had a homicide, it would show us a huge spike. Because per capita, our homicide rate would be huge. <coughs> no, but a, that, that information is a consolidation of each individual type of crime, but it's a consolidation of But crimes. it's based per capita. Right, right, but it's it doesn't matter what the crime is. It's just a it's a consolidated number against a population. The ratio is to a hundred thousand because of the cities is how they come up with the number. So the 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 value of the crime, whether it's severe or you know not, is not a factor in what the crime rate is and how that's measured. At least from the information that I have. Well, that's actually not the way it works. If you want to see how they don't put values, I guess, on what I have, they didn't put values like you know, murder is eight points or ten points, and you know, shoplifting is one. It's all just each one is an incident, and it's added up. Here's this. Here's the so population. The hundred thousand is, is the math that's done is to compare towns 
that only have 11,500. It's per that 100,000 person. We're talking about 350 larcenies over the course of a year that that is setting an 11,400 residential population into the number that you're talking about. When you say it in terms of the fourth highest crime rate, first, I don't think that's accurate, but we're talking about I didn't make property You know, it's not my my information. Well, I, I monitor them um, quarterly as they're released. Um, I just don't think four is, is correct, and I could be wrong. But I, I think it, um, we'd have to go back to 14 if it's hey, because the, uh, the 16, as I showed you, <coughs> off the rate of, of what it was in Well, that's the last available yeah, year. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, 17 mm -hmm. takes yeah. a while yeah. for 17 yeah, yeah. To, to come out. But we're talking about a small amount of, of things that have a big impact because of a low residential population. In fact, it used to be much worse years ago when the population went from 10,000 to 11,400 and um, it, it, it got skewed just by that, that little bit amount of, of population. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think you started the, the question by saying you feel very safe and, and, yeah. and I actually am very proud to hear that. Yeah. So according to be. neighborhoodscout.com, Crime statistics for the town of East Windsor, your chances of becoming the victim of violent crime in East Windsor is 1 in 710 versus in the state of Connecticut, it's 1 in 440. So we're roughly twice as safe as the state average. We'll take that. We'll take that. Just so other information doesn't say that, Jason. Well, I, I didn't, I noticed yeah. you and Bob had the same research and I, I didn't have access to it. So well, no, but what, what, did, what did you say, Jason? Um, well, it depends well, on what you read. Read what you just read. Chances of becoming a victim of violent crime in East Well, yeah, victim of violent crime. There's, we were talking about larcenies. Yes, but I, I don't have the benefit of seeing what you guys are looking for. Oh, wow. Okay. Although both of you have the same research. Well, I, don't well, I, I went to the same place, I guess. It's, uh, yeah. That's a whole shot. And I, I can give you a website. I think that I, I, don't, I only have one web. Well, I'll show you to give the paper. If you want to look it up, Jason, I'm just assuming. Uh -huh. Crime, crimes per square mile um, in East Windsor, <laughs> The UCR data, read the warning that's on there. That's important. So we're... Well, the again, warning on UCR data's website. Is this, is this UCR? No, no just keep up the safe neighborhoods. Uh, this is pretty... This is from the state, I think. Because it matches. They're, they're pretty matched. I went, I went to two places. I went to both of these places. This is the state one, too. <clears throat> and it's like I said, it's Larson. That's what seems to be the okay. thing. That we good? Yeah. yeah, we're good. Yeah, thank you. Well, well, thanks very much for having me. No. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking it was Walmart, but now we're doing better. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Go to attorney. Excuse me. Can we just have 30 seconds? We certainly may. So we'll do the agenda. Okay. Un unadjourned. No, no. I meant it. Hmm. So what do I think of this police commission? Jason wants to adjourn? No, police commission. Well, I, a motion. I didn't hear something. I think you're <coughs> OK. Uh, I, we did, I guess we didn't do the police, police commission. So. The police commissioner just left. That's true. Okay. I got, I got okay. something I want to say. You said nothing on the. You have. I'm, I noticed I'm that. tired and. Uh, well, when we turn off the. We're, we're adjourned. Huh? We're adjourned. Well, then if we got the camera going. Yeah. Right, turn yeah. it on. I don't need to say something's going to get me in trouble. Public participation? Wasn't that part of the agenda? I thought. I it. Yeah, I think it was. I don't know. Yeah, public participation. Yes. Uh, I think we have to honor adjourn. Do you want? We're having public participation. Keith. I, I, I don't want to. Um, Steve was going to say something. So I don't want to. Um, do you want me to go, or do you want to say something? Well, I mean. What I gotta say, it doesn't matter anyway. But uh, you know, they're coming in here with what under under one percent increase. Mm, right. There's, there's a catch somewhere to this. Well, there is because 
There's that, a cash that, somewhere. They're getting the money from somewhere else. No, that no, don't know no, about. no. It's just that there was no increase in their uh, salaries, which is the primary driving factor in, in, in the police department, because we're negotiating their uh, next three-year contract. So we don't put money in uh, for next year that we're not aware of. And okay, so, but now they're, they're asking uh, um, for, for new cars. Uh, I, I believe they need to get the cars every year in order to keep the fleet. That's in right. capital. Right. That's in CIP. Right, but I thought we uh, had talked about that once before. Motor vehicles, are they capital improvements? Well, that's that's a question for CIP, not the uh, police department. Really. Yeah. All right, so, because if I remember correctly, they used to have the cars in their budget. Mm -hmm. Probably a good place to put it. Right, so it made it look like it, it, would, be, it would be more than probably 2% if they had the cars in there, you know. Cars are 88K, $88,000. Yeah, but for, it, for two cars, 40 yeah. grand a piece? Yeah. That's what he said. That don't sound bad for a car. No, but They're no, going off the state bid, though. They are. Yes. All right, so they're buying them cheap because everybody's buying them. It's, it's statewide. But it just, now let me ask you a question, because uh, so far everything we've seen, the increases are pretty, uh, my opinion, pretty high, and I think it, it's going to fail. It's going to go to two percent. Oh, so now let me ask you a question: If it goes to two percent and they're under one percent, that's where they stay. Oh, absolutely. They don't get allowed the two percent. No, we we don't give departments more than they've asked. All right, so that's all they're going to get right there. It'll be their one percent. That's right. If it, if it, but that doesn't include the salary changes. That they'll catch up to us next year. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Good that you came back. We had on our agenda um, a police commission. Does the, do you want to say anything about the budget of the police commission, or was that just? Um, no. Well, actually, I do. Um, we had uh, we put forward a budget for cover just our regular meetings, and I think a hundred dollars for supplies. Um, but what I would like to do. Uh, is change that at some point in time. Um, so we have to have a, a special meeting where we'll be over budget. So, so you, you, you have the secretary for the uh, special meeting, is that yeah. what you're saying? But, all right. Okay. If we have to call a special meeting, we would be over budget at that point, so it would probably be a smarter thing. Do you know how much you get per 125. 125? But is that pretty much in line with the oh, That's max. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what we got a lot of line, good enough. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Good enough. Thanks. Good night. Thanks. Okay, Keith. Uh, Keith Campbell up from Depot Street. So just a couple of quick comments. The, um, the, what I heard tonight, uh, which I didn't know just because I'm, I'm newer than most, was that the medical um, calls are going out to Colin. They're to be dispatched out to Colin. And, and it might be good to have the ambulance or the fire department come in and tell you guys so we can hear from the public actually what happens when a medical emergency call goes out to Colin. I mean, how do they know what's available in East Windsor? How do they know who to call? How do they know how to get people dispatched for that medical emergency? Um, how would a Colin dispatcher know on a, on a you know, maybe they do? But it doesn't make me feel comfortable that a dispatcher from Holland is is dealing with a medical emergency in East Windsor, and and again, I think the public would, might feel comfortable knowing how that works with the ambulance and the um, and the fire department. And then you have know, Keith, that they have always done it. Right. The Holland Dispatch Center. It's not something that's new. It's like been forever. Right. And and yet, you know, they 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 get it right. Well, I mean, that's a question that someone new would like to hear yeah. that's being done right, because what we count on in the public is that there's going to be um, the, yeah. the, 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 what we pay for in our taxes and what we count on is, is emergency services, public safety. And um, then another issue that came up tonight was a discussion a little bit about Walmart, and I heard that Walmart has its own security and that Walmart is managing its own issues. I presume that, uh, that Southern Auto has its own security. So what I heard tonight was a large organization that, that uh, I looked at the crime statistics has a, has a reasonable amount of larcenies and the police department said that they're managing their own. 
and I know we have to make arrests, to, but you know, it's part of the process, but um, it's, it's, uh, there was some talk about the casino and the need for resources at the casino, but if the casino is going to operate like Walmart, where they're going to have their own security, it'd be interesting to know what impact something like that actually would even have on the community in terms of uh, crime. And then the last thing was, quite honestly, the discussion about um, crime statistics in East Windsor was really not all that satisfying. Um, I've looked at the, some of the crime statistics. I don't feel comfortable hearing that uh, my risk of, of, uh, of uh, assault or, or some kind of um, uh, assault is one in 700. It doesn't make me feel comfortable that we're, that we're less than, uh, I think, when, well, that we're less than the state average. I don't know about a, a violent crime. I, well, I heard a statistic tonight that we're one in 700 for violent crime mm -hmm. versus one in 400. Doesn't make me feel comfortable to know that I'm one in 700. That doesn't even make me feel good at all. And if the state is one in 400, is is fine. Um, and the fact, and I know our statistics are that we have a high crime rate. You should be looking, normalizing it by uh, population, which means you have to look at a rate. You have to do it. I mean, you know, we can't. You know, the crime. You know, murder in East Winter is an awful thing. It, I mean, and that's going to affect the crime statistics. But you know, 500 uh, larcenies in East Windsor is 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 also an awful thing in terms of uh, affecting the quality of life. I really wasn't. I didn't think it was satisfying to hear that there really isn't a um, a real good handle on where the crime is coming from. There's theories that it's coming from Route Five and and, <coughs> and other places. I I've heard these arguments from from police departments. They usually have a very clear indication of how much crime is coming from Route Five, how much crime is coming on 91. How much crime is coming from people going to the Southern Auto? How much is local crime coming out of people's homes? What exactly is happening in our community so we can address, we can feel comfortable knowing that we have, uh, we're, we're, we're deal we, our police department is efficiently um, dealing with the crime rate. And I didn't hear, enough the board of selectmen wasn't, was asking questions, but I didn't hear from the police department for any clear answers and, uh, about um, how they're addressing crime in East Windsor. And also, quite frankly, I've heard some comments that it was from people from out of town, but I also heard some comments that it's from people in town. Somehow our socioeconomic uh, demographic makeup of the people in our community are different, I think, the comparison was like with Summers or with another town. And I reject that. I don't believe that's the case. My experience with these co communities around us is that people are, are similar in terms of maybe some people have less money, maybe people are, are economically not as well off, but that doesn't mean that those people are committing violent crimes or larcenies necessarily. You know, we have towns like in South Windsor, you have the same drug problems, the same larcenies, the same break-ins, the same issues, and why is their crime rate so much less than the crime rate in East Windsor? Because they have the same kind of stuff. So I'd, I'd like to ask you to bring, bring, have the police department come back in and ask them to provide some details about exactly what's going on with crime in East Windsor, because I didn't feel comfortable at all tonight just hearing, yeah, you know, that's just the way it is. Because it shouldn't be that's the way it is. It should be, we're working, we, have, we pay a lot of money for that police department. They should be applying all of their efforts to make sure that they consistently reduce the crime rate. They need to know where the crime is occurring and they need to target it so that all of us are going to be safe. Myself, my family, my children, my neighbors, all of you. It doesn't, doesn't make sense just to say that, that um, we're, um, we're less than the state average. I don't buy that. I don't think that means anything. So I'm asking you to bring them back in at some point, not in a budget session, but ask them to more specifically. And the goals that you asked for, what are the specific goals? They should have goals how they're going to target crime specifically in the town of East Windsor so that we get the most for our, our money and we can feel safe in the community. You know, so I wouldn't uh, like uh, domestic uh, disputes, assaults within the home, that would fall into that category. Right. It would, wouldn't it? It'd be part of that. It because would. I, you know, I, I never hear, I'm around town every day, I <clears> never <throat> hear of anybody being beat up or assaulted out on the street. I'm thinking a lot of this must happen within the home between a husband and a wife or a child or, you know, got a fight with a father. You know, I, I a lot of it must be in there that you don't hear about because I, I never hear about it out on the street in public where someone is being assaulted and beat up or punched out or anything. So, I mean, well, I, I do think 
<coughs> that there are some areas that we could ask them to polish up for, like a more detailed understanding of the uh, crime rate. And I was really disappointed in what they had for goals for this coming year. They were just just a bunch of words, uh, nothing specific at all. And, uh, and I recognize that there are some things that they can't talk about in public hearing, but I would have thought that they would have had a bullet for school security, just just a, a bullet for that. And uh, and one that I was always challenged to do uh, when I was working was cost reduction you know, in my operation. And I would have to define the areas I was going to go after. Uh, I, I think I was disappointed that they did not have better information in that area, uh, the specifics of, of those things. I, I think that the crime statistics that Charlie quoted kind of surprised them and, and uh, took them back. Uh, if there is other better data out there, that's just a, you know, just a data bank is all it is. Uh, if that's not the right number, then what is the right number? And you know, they, they should have access to that kind of thing better than than us. I don't believe we're top four in the state of Connecticut. No, I, I, yeah, I well, don't believe it. You won't get me to believe that. I don't believe it. I think you have to see. You have to understand what a crime is. You know, it, it's a whole bunch <coughs> of things. And in in our ranking, uh, a lot of it was larceny. And that could be, you know, someone stealing out of uh, uh, out of uh, Walmart, for example. Well, I, I understand that. Is a traffic ticket a crime? Is that considered no. in there, too? No. no. It isn't? No, motor vehicles not. Oh, vehicles. not the motor vehicles, no. But, but if they take, you know, $10 worth or $50 worth of goods, stick it in their pocket and walk out, and someone catches them at it, uh, and they call the police. Well, that shot. Then that's a crime. Well, I still, I still can't believe we're number. Four. No, I don't think. I don't. We're certainly not now. And in, in no. what, what I was talking about years. And like, if I go, the bad year was uh, 2014, and we had um, 427 in crimes, basically. And if you go back to, of those, uh, there were uh, five rapes. <coughs> and, uh, Six aggravated assaults, one murder, so that's 12, really what Jason was talking about, 12 and 427. Now you go to 2016, um, they, we had... Uh, but how many total were there? 2016, there were 215, 2014, there were 427, so a, a, over a 50% reduction of difference between 14 and 16. And, and that would make a tremendous amount of ranking in the state. It would bring what could have been what, the what top, changed, top four. Or what dropped what, it to 50 percent, though? I don't know. What the, <coughs> the major statistic was um, uh, larceny. And it, it, larceny in uh, 2014 was uh, 319. Larceny in 2016 was 169. So right. that was a... That was the question that I asked, you know, yeah. what did you do to change it, to put it at 50%? Because <coughs> yeah. the, 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 the nature of the crime is not weighted in the analysis, it's it, period. That's true. And, and as Jason pointed out, the, the uh, whatever kind of crime there was, our, our, in my and here, that's rape, uh, aggravated assault, and murder were the same for both of those years. It was just larceny that was the difference, and I don't, can't explain that, but we uh, can I, well. just, I just clarify one thing? Quickly. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't saying that I think South Windsor is a, is a dangerous community. In fact, quite the opposite. I think South Windsor is a beautiful community, and I love living here. Well, and, and we're in East Windsor. I'm sorry, East Windsor, sorry. <laughs> South East Windsor, South East Windsor. East Windsor is a beautiful community. I love living here. I feel safe. I feel like, uh, like you said, I can walk anywhere in town, and I do, and I don't ever feel not, I'm not safe. What I was pointing out was that the police department has an obligation to target where the issues are, to tell us where the issues are, and to tell us how they're dealing with those issues so that they can make sure they, 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 they uh, reduce the crime rate as much as possible. We statistically not, should, should not be uh, less than other towns like Ellington or Summers or Suffield or any of those towns or South Windsor. 
and I don't feel unsafe, but I think we're paying a lot of money for our police department, and they should know where the data is and what's going on. To leave the status quo is an awful thing. You know, we have uh, robberies and 7-Elevens and robberies in gas stations. The communities just get used to it. They think it's like the, the way life is supposed to be. It's not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be safe when we go in, when, when our families go into a, a gas station or they go into a convenience store. They're not supposed to be subjected to someone that's robbing that store with a gun or a knife. Police departments are always supposed to be applying pressure in those areas that they can to reduce crime. So all I was saying was I was not satisfied with the level of discussion because it didn't seem like there was really a lot of information that was being offered about where crime is happening, and why it's happening, and what they're doing to target it. I don't feel unsafe in East Windsor. I just want to make that clear. And nobody should feel unsafe in East Windsor, hopefully, because it's a, um, as you said, Charlie, yeah. it's, it, you can go anywhere in this town yeah. and not feel that it's not safe, and, and uh, <coughs> or, or feel that it's unsafe. It's not like that. And so I just want to make people clear. I'm not saying it's a, it's a dangerous community, because we're not. It's a wonderful farming community. Um, I just wasn't happy with the level of discussion that, I think that you maybe guys got. Well, at, at the um, police commission might be a time to go into that in a little more detail, too. And those are monthly meetings. And, and I, if I, hopefully after the budget season's over, I can get to some of those. If, if the prime rate is coming down, there has to be some methodology that pinpoints the areas that were high. Uh, and they probably had that, but they sure didn't say that tonight. Uh, when I, after the discussion about crime rate, uh, it kind of left me cold that, that they must have data that uh, would support the position that we have come down substantially in crime rate. And uh, I didn't get that from them, but there, there must be something. You can't, you can't do it by shooting fish in a barrel. You have to focus on things. Okay. Okay. Does everybody want to move to adjourn? No. No more public participation? Okay. Second move to adjourn. Okay. We're adjourned. There's a couple. Makes me want some statistics at all. No. no. Like playing how you believe last year. Yeah. 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 Where do you want to check? That's the most recent history. Oh yeah, yeah, that's the It's also worth yeah.